All right, a little late to the party here, but I had to make a video on the newest update for Cubase, Cubase 12, because there is a bunch of things in this update that are super exciting. My kids made the t-shirt, and the watch that I'm wearing right now is a Cubase watch that I won at a Cubase workshop at a local music store before I started showing off Cubase products and Native Instruments products locally in the West Coast of Canada. And I won it because I answered a question that nobody knew the answer to, which was, what does the Q stand for in reference to EQ? So not the EQQ, but the actual Q setting that you set on an EQ or parametric EQ. So does anybody know what that Q stands for? You could probably look it up pretty easily, but if you know, put it in the comments. Not sponsored, not uh, getting paid to make this video, but they do send me the update for free. So let's get into some of my favorite things. It's not a flashy, shiny new update in terms of the user interface. It's more of the under the surface stuff that is just sort of bringing some of the older functionality of Cubase to light, like the logical editor and audio warping and stuff like that. I will put chapter markers in the bottom so you can skip ahead to different things. And if there's video that you want to see in the future where I dig into some of this stuff that maybe isn't out there, let me know. For me, one of my favorite features has to be the lack of the dongle and of course, the compatibility with the M1 Max, which I just recently got. I've got a video on what I think about these new laptops. I can take just the laptop, nothing else, and go work for a few hours remotely. And that is fantastic. So thank you so much for getting rid of the dongle and for the M1 compatibility. I haven't done any extensive tests to see if it makes a huge difference. With that out of the way, let's go on to my probably my top favorite feature, which is this MIDI remote integration. And what that's gonna allow you to do is hook up any MIDI controller, keyboard, something like machine or the push to here, and give you the ability to write your own script for it in a beautiful setup. So I'm gonna to go to the lower zone. What I'm gonna do is very quickly just try showing a couple things with the push to. And then in a future video, I'm gonna use the machine and set up a script for that, a custom script or go over setting up a custom script. So for now, I'm gonna use the push to because that one is working fine for me. I got started with a little template. So let me go and change this up a little bit for you. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to studio, MIDI remote manager, and then you're gonna go over to scripts and you're gonna click add surface and then that will show up down at the bottom. You're gonna choose the input port. So I'm using the push and then you can go and name it, choose the vendor and stuff like that. So up at the top, we've got Ableton there. So I went ahead and did that already. And when you do that, you're gonna get a blank template. You get these little symbols that pop up, which we're gonna see here over on the push one. I'm just gonna keep editing this one. Now you can see I've got a whole bunch of knobs mapped up at the top. So that's these knobs right here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play around with some of the pads down here on the bottom. And instead of using the push to as a controller for note information, what we're gonna do is we're gonna map some of these buttons down here on the bottom to just some kind of function. And you'll see how easy it is to, to view your buttons and get an overview of what each button does because we don't have LED strips showing us what you've mapped this function to. I'm gonna start mapping some of these buttons on the bottom. So we're just gonna go like this and press a whole row of them. I could go through and do this entire 64 pads if I wanted to. So I'm gonna go click the mapping assistant and that allows you now to take these buttons that you've laid out however you want and assign them to anything. So I'm gonna click this bottom button right here and we're going to assign a Cubase function to it. Let's go undo and we'll click edit undo apply mapping to this button. Next, we're gonna go on to our next button and we're gonna to go to edit, redo, apply mapping. We can go on to the next one and we can apply any key command that we can think of. So I'm gonna go over to navigate and up and I'm gonna apply that to this third button. And then we're gonna to go to the fourth button and we're gonna apply navigate down. So I'll just go down and navigate down. So now these four buttons have a few things, undo, redo, up and down applied to them. So that's looking pretty good. Let's leave that for now. And I'm just gonna click back on this back arrow and I could even take this, tear it off and then chuck that down on my lower monitor. And now this is gonna always show me what I've got mapped to my push controller. So now if I press the play button, it's play. 
Uh, let's go check some of those new things I did. Let's try making some cuts here. And then I press undo and it is undoing those things for me. Redo. So that's working perfectly. Let's try uh, checking out this note. Let's go up and there it is up and down. So moving notes around with the controller. So you can imagine how many different controls you could have mapped out to something like the push here. Like you could have a ton of things already set up and have them very quickly viewable. And eventually these are going to become muscle memory however you set them up for yourself. So this is what's so exciting about this update is the ability to take these controllers that we have just sitting around, often they're plugged in and start using them in a constructive way, which goes far beyond key commands because you've got this laid out in front of you. How many times do you have a key command set up and you forget what it is? So think about how far you can take this the amount of things you could do, custom things you could set up. Okay, so next thing we'll look at is the chord track in Cubase. So I'm gonna go project, add track, and chord. And a new feature they've added is the ability to take any audio, drag it onto the chord track, and Cubase will analyze the information and try and spit out the chords onto the chord track, which you can then use to manipulate other things in your project. So watch this. I'm going to drag that audio right onto the chord track. It's going to analyze it. And then it comes up with what it thinks are the right chords for this chunk of audio. So down below, we've got some scale assistance as well. But up at the top is where we're going to see the, the chords. So that did almost perfect job. This is an A major seven going to a C major seven, A major seven, and then a G major seven. Yeah, really great feature. If you're not a musician, you can now drag any audio in there and get Cubase to figure out what it thinks the chords are. You could then use that information to uh, influence other tracks. And Very Audio is Cubase's pitch correction, Melodyne-like software and it's really great and it just keeps getting better. Right now, if I want to work with Vary Audio on this vocal track, I double click on it and in the lower zone here, we can see the audio and then I'm gonna go over to Vary Audio and I'm gonna click Edit Vary Audio and it's already analyzed it and if it hasn't, it'll just take a second to, to analyze the audio and to put your audio onto pitches, what it thinks are the right pitches. And you can see this line here, which shows you the fluctuations in pitch on each note. So sometimes it'll make slices where you don't necessarily want them. And there's all sorts of ways to edit that information, which we're not going to go over in this video, but let's have a listen to this. Slowing down. So of course we can take this audio and we can push it up. Slowing down. So I could use the chord track. Let's try with the bass, the strings, and the voice, why not? Let's put everything in there. And then we're gonna drag those onto the chord track. It's taking all of them into consideration, which is crazy. All right, so we got A minor, D and E chord, which is incredible. I just can't believe this feature is part of Cubase. It really is maybe the most insane new feature in some ways. I'm not going to use that because I don't think I'm going to need to. I am going to use just the key of A minor for a vocal harmony. So I'm going to duplicate this track, double click on that. So I'm just going to go over to the scale and choose A minor. Right here we'll just go to uh, natural minor, which is Aeolian. And now it's going to restrict all of these notes to the key of A minor. I'm going to move this up a third. This first note is actually an E, so I'm just going to shift this up a little bit so that it goes to an E. And then we're going to go like this. We're going to take these notes and I am going to grab this and move this up to a G. So now we are a third above that E. We're going to go snap pitch editing. So I'm going to drag this up, move it up to a G. And look what happens. You can see that as I move it up, the distance between these two notes is changing. And that's because it won't let this one go to an F sharp because there's no F sharp in the key of A minor. And so it's adjusting the notes for me. Okay, so I'm going to take these notes. I'm going to move it up to the G. Slowing down. 
But this one moved up a little too far. I'm going to bring that down and you can see that it's snapping the pitches to the key of A minor, which is actually all the white notes. You see how it's not letting it go into the in-between notes? So I'm going to move that one down. And then now we're going to take this chunk and we're going to move that up to an F and see what happens. Almost. There we go. Not quite working, is it? That's okay. We can listen to the notes that aren't working and play around with them. But the cool thing is if a note just sounds wrong, click on it and then just move it up or down and you're going to get to another note in the key of A minor that might just work. Let's bring this one down as well. Sounds great. Okay, so what that means for you as maybe a non-musician is it's going to be a lot easier for you to find notes that might work in a harmony. Take it up a third or a fourth or take it down a third or a fourth and then listen to what it sounds like and then any notes that sound really wrong, try moving them up or try moving them down. And what I didn't show you is after you've dragged something onto the chord track and it's done some kind of analysis, you can select all those chords and drag them onto a MIDI track. Watch what happens, I drag those onto a track and now I get MIDI of these chords. So let's have a listen. Let's add our Omnisphere. Isn't that incredible? So we already got chords for an instrument just taken out of the analysis of the chords of that chunk of audio. It's kind of kind of cheating, but kind of awesome. All right, effects modulator. Really cool little effect that is now part of Cubase 12. You can think of it as a way to add movement to any sound. Could be any audio track or any virtual instrument track. You put it on as effect and the audio is going to pass through this. Okay, so we've got this little pad going here. Here we've got a filter. This one will be kind of obvious because it's starting from the bottom and going to the top. Turn this on and you can see this thing just keeps going through and if I press play, it starts over. So it's changing or opening up a filter. If I click just once, I get a button that's floating over top and I can change the curve from either uh, linear to a logarithmic kind of curve. If I want to start adding in other points, all I have to do is double click. And then you've got your curve point in between those two edits. I can double click another point and then drop something in down here. Double click another one, bring it up here. If you ever forget how to manipulate these little buttons, you just click the I button right here. And then this effect, I gotta point out one thing that is maybe the coolest part about effects modulator and maybe a sign of things to come is these two little undo and redo buttons. Really looking forward to seeing those undo redo buttons popping up on everything. Wouldn't that be great? Next thing, let's just have a listen to this filter so far. So you can see how it's repeating over time and we can load up some custom ones like this one right here. Let's go click right there and now you can see just that pattern is loading in that spot. If I select maybe a smaller chunk, it's going to fit that pattern into that tiny chunk right there. Let's have a listen to this. Or if I wanted to take place of this whole thing right here, I select all of it or none of it. And then now that pattern is entirely spread over this whole gap. And then you've got all these other modules that you can do down here in the bottom. So we can add a pitch shifter module. And with this, we can change, detune the audio. And this will work on anything. So it's kind of like the audio is coming into this effect and being processed. Let's double click, drop a note in right there. And let's have a listen to this. So that's pitch shifting, we've got overdrive, you've got pan, you can pan things left and right, have that move over time. Pretty cool sound design tool and uh, changing sound over time and all of that. Okay, so the next one I want to look at is the audio warp improvements. Cubase has had the ability for some time to be able to push and pull 
audio. Some of the things they've added is things like the ability to mess with the audio right on the main page. So let's say this was a background vocal track. I'm just going to mangle this audio just here just for a second so you can you can get an idea of what you might do with this. So all I wanted to do here was just show you what audio might look like when you're arranging background vocals. The singer stops singing a little too soon. So what I used to do is take the audio, cut it out, and then you know, do something like this, maybe a crossfade right there. Now their audio cuts off exactly the same time as say the lead vocalist. But with this audio warp feature now, it's going to be a lot easier to do this kind of stuff right from the main page. And so the way it works is if you go over to the time warp tool, there's a new feature on the time warp tool. And it's not really related to the time warp in terms of warping the time or the tempo grid. Now what you're going to do, if you go down to free warp, you're going to have the ability to start dropping in these markers. And if you can't see them, by the way, you're just probably not zoomed in far enough. So I'm going to drop in a marker, drag another marker and extend this out so that this audio lines up with the audio above it. So maybe something like that right there. And all you have to do when you're pushing things around, if you're not close enough, you're going to end up making another point. And so if you want to push this point in the middle, just make sure this little line there the line to the left of those arrows is right over top of the other marker that you want to move. And then now I can grab that and move it over. Definitely something you would be doing a lot with background vocals. Let's look at some electric guitar and see how it works in practice. OK, so this chord right here should line up with this bass drum hit right here. Let me drag it on top so we can see a little bit easier this way. So I need to move this strum over. So let's see how this sounds. So there's another strum right here. So I'm going to have to be careful. Watch what happens if I click a marker right here and just move this over. Now all the audio before it gets moved and all the audio after it gets moved, that's not what we want at all. We just want to move this one chord over. So in order to do that, we need to lock in some audio before it and lock in some audio after it. So I'm going to click before this one right here so that this little gap of a chord is going to get stretched out to allow this chunk to get onto the right spot. And then I also want to lock in this point after here so that any changes I make inside this little range isn't going to affect what's after it and isn't going to affect what's before it. So now that I've done that, I can click on this one, drag it over a little bit, and it's going to compress just this portion right here. So let's listen to that. And that worked perfectly. Let's try dragging it too far. You get the idea how that works. So you can now go in and manipulate all of these chords and get them exactly to line up by dropping in these markers, moving the start point over. And that one's a little bit late as well, but this one looks pretty close. So I'm going to drop a marker right there and then see what happens if I bring this one over. And even that one after there, you know, it's like, where is that lining up? Well, we got to make sure we're checking with the grid, but that's how you would go through and make these subtle changes. And now let's try that one. Let's move this guy right here. We'll go like that. And it just works beautifully. And then the last thing that really blew my mind. There's a whole bunch of other stuff, of course, but the last thing that blew my mind on this version is the ability to have, you know, a bunch of random things. Let's take those chunks right there and then maybe this uh, MIDI chunk. And I'm just going to go command and click. And then I'm going to go up to file, export, selected events. So you can now go selected events and you can export just a whole bunch of random things in your project all at the same time. Incredible import export features on Cubase that just keep getting better. So some really great stuff in there. Uh, hit me up in the comments on specific things that you want to see. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell and we'll see you in the next video.